Kenneth William Stickers, professor, American professor, who appeared to be in Poland. I don't know the reason, that's why I would like to ask him. <laughs> why? What, what the hell is he doing <laughs> in my gloomy city? Please, come, professor. <laughs> is this a uh, philosophical interview? Hello, yes. Well, we've got one mic, so we need to be uh, very in a sort of agreement. I don't say a compromise, but uh, so, sort of. So, tell me, please, why are you here? Why am I here? You could be in France, you could be in, 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 in England. France is dangerous. Well, it's, uh, in many ways, it's, all, it's a, a long story. It's part of a uh, exchange arrangement between my university, Southern Illinois University, and uh, University of Warsaw, the uh, uh, Institute of Philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, faculty from each university uh, spend time at the other's institution. So last semester, um, uh, Dr. Burstika was a visiting professor at my university. Um, uh, professor Rojinska has been a visiting professor, and now I'm here. Oh, yeah. it, do, do I need to translate into Polish? No? no? I'm a very good simultaneous uh, translator, but if you, you see the... This is how it, 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 it happens in Chicago. You, you just speak Polish and uh, yes, we speak English. But uh, for those who would like to know, afterwards, Professor will do an abbreviated version <laughs> and I'll do a simultaneous brilliant Polish version. Yes. <laughs> or, or Marta will do. Marta, because she's very professional, you know. She, she, she got an MA in a simultaneous translation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I should add that the, the main point of connection is in the area of philosophy of culture. Uh, that, that is something that's very unusual in the United States, philosophy of culture, but my department is very much interested in that. And Professor Rzynska, who was then chair of the Department of Philosophy of Culture, uh, recognized that, that this was unusual in American universities. And so uh, she made the suggestion that we enter into a, uh, a collaborative uh, arrangement by which we exchange faculty, exchange students, and hopefully write books together. Maybe some musicians too? Yes, 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 yes indeed. We have a, a great deal of interest in philosophy of music in my department. Mm -hmm. uh, at least three of my colleagues work mm -hmm. in that area. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Because my father used to be a professor in uh, Kansas University. He, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, wanted, he didn't want to go there. He wanted to be at home with his dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they uh, agreed to, to, to bear with him as a as a co and a co as an overseas co composer being located in Poland. But he wrote some pieces. But anyway, for tuba solo, but Pavel, he doesn't play, play tuba, but uh, you know, uh, the double <laughs> bass is not bad too. Yes. No? Uh, I, I've heard your father's piece performed. Well, That's, mm -hmm. where? Uh, Seattle Symphony Orchestra. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? <laughs> He's my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> about the, the, the situation in the, in, the, uh, in the world of philosophy now. Do, do philosophy. people dream of philosophy? Do they need it? Do, <laughs> do they pay for it? Do, <laughs> what? Well, um, in the world, that's, that's difficult mm. to, to, to mm. describe. Um, generally, I'm not happy with the state of philosophy in the world. Mm. Uh, I think it's become uh, disengaged from, uh, from everyday life. Uh, that uh, I believe philosophy should concern itself with the questions of real people in real living situations, mm -hmm. the real questions of life, and uh, it's increasingly become concerned with its own technical questions raised by professional philosophers, and I don't think that's good. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is, I think there is a reaction to that. Uh, and that is uh, increasing engagement of philosophy and philosophers with popular culture. Uh, looking at popular culture, whether it be music, cinema, television, uh, whatever, and seeing how philosophical questions are being raised in this. Uh, questions that the professional philosophers are not addressing. Uh, and therefore, the, the popular culture often addresses them very, very badly. 
Um, so I think uh, this is one of the positive things I see, is uh, philosophers uh, looking more and more at the real questions that people uh, are, have a, a, a thirst to know about. Um, questions about, you know, the perennial questions of philosophy, the meaning of existence and um, so forth, what makes a life worth living, what makes for a good life. Uh, and um, as I say, these questions get raised in the, in the popular culture. And um, uh, that uh, philosophers have, you know, have not been addressing these. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and uh, th thank you very much, because we are now in a philosophical mm. cave, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, w w which, which is just the reverse of the Platonic cave, because it's a studio for philosophy. We run a <laughs> seminar here, Professor will be uh, my guest on the 1st of uh, December, and uh, in your field is philosophy of economics. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you like Aristotle. Mm -hmm. That please is be helpful to translate into Polish. But the plaques read, "Profit is no more the purpose of business than eating is the purpose of living." Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't understand it at first. I was you know a young undergraduate student. And I asked him where did that come from, and he says, "Why that's Aristotle." And he says, young man, that if you want to understand economics, you need to read Aristotle. And that was how I first began reading Aristotle. Because he said it's Aristotle who get, makes clear to us the relationship between ends and means. And he would explain, and he's written, actually written about this, he's written articles about this. He says the big mistake in contemporary economic thinking is we think that because a business needs to make profit, that therefore the purpose of business is making profit. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's as stupid as saying that because we have to eat in order to live, that therefore eating is the purpose of living. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so uh, I says, well, what is the purpose of business then? And he says, well, to make a better world uh, and to use profit as a means of making a better world. Mm -hmm. So I got my first lesson in Aristotle yes. uh, from a very, very successful American businessman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you are interested in the details, please come for the seminar. But uh, I, I, I still think that Aristotle has something to, 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 to well, he was brave to say that uh, politics goes to, should go together with uh, ethics. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, but this is Aristotle. But uh, I brought Plato today just. Uh, no, no, not to make you sad with your Aristotle, but... Uh, I like Plato too. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Pablo, uh, if his uh, souls they don't, don't manage uh, uh, to, to, to become divine, uh, uh, after seeing the, the ideas, transcendent ideas, so they grasped something, but not entirely the, the, um, the wisdom of, of transcendent ideas, wisdom of that music divine music, they become people and they choose different different paths of life. And Plato just, uh, 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 he, he, he made a list of those paths of life. And there is your path of life too, the path of musician. Peter, uh, it's also for you. Uh, uh, and uh, also for those who do economics, the, 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 there is a place as well. That's why I would like to, to, to read that short quotation and then ask Professor to make a face for that, or at least uh, say some words. <laughs> and so, uh, but souls which fall behind and lose their vision of the truth and are for some unfortunate reason or another weighted down by being filled with, forget with forgetfulness and weakness, lose their wings thanks to the burden and fall to earth. At this point, they are subject to a law that they are not to be planted into the bodies of animals in their first incarnation. The souls which have seen the most are to enter. The seeds of men will, will become philosophers, lovers of beauty, of music, and those who are dedicated to love. 
The second group, those of law-abiding kings or military commanders or civic leaders. The third group, those of politicians, estate managers or businessmen. Together. The fourth group, those of men who love exercising in gymnasium or future experts in bodily health, so uh, doctors and uh, uh, physiotherapists. Then, fifth group will live as prophets or initiators into one of the mystery cults. The sixth group will most suitably live as poets or some other kind of representative artists. The seventh are artisans or farmers, the eighth are sophists or demagogues, and the ninth, theorists. So, uh, what is nice that music, philosophy, love are together, but very far from business. What is together with business? Politics. But it's not as bad as a tyranny or demagogy or sophistry. What is your comment? Oh, my comment. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, <laughs> I am not uh, sure. I mean, this may be a place where I would uh, be more uh, in line with Aristotle than Plato. Yeah, like um, and not in the, the sense that, uh, you know, in your depiction there, that the, the, uh, the things of the sensuous material world are seen as distractions uh, from the eternal forms. Uh, and um, so the arts are suspicious uh, in, in this regard uh, because they present things that are beautiful mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this at the same time distracts us from the pure idea of, of beauty. Uh, whereas with Aristotle, the things of the material world uh, are, are, uh, uh, are always pointing towards, are always intimations of, of, of what is truly beautiful. Okay. And even of the divine. Yeah, with my, if I may mm -hmm. say, say yeah. half word, half word, okay. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, in this regard, then, um, I'm not sure why we shouldn't have philosopher carpenters or carpenters philosophers mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. Uh, there, uh, there was recently in the American news that one of the candidates for the Republican Party, uh, Mr. Rubio, who commented that we need fewer philosophers and more welders, people who can weld. Um, which reminded me that a good colleague of mine is both a welder and a philosopher. Uh, he, uh, he, he worked for years uh, as, as a welder, uh, but now he's a professor of philosophy. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think that's more, more my uh, uh, ideal. Uh, it's not that we need more philosophers, but we need more people who are, are philosophically minded. Mm -hmm. Or more, mm -hmm. more, more philosophers who have few human faiths yes. you know, and, yes. and, and yeah. thoughts. Well, you know, but, uh, it's a big prejudice mm -hmm. telling that uh, Plato disliked arts. Mm -hmm. He simply said that uh, like sophistry, demagogy is far from philosophy. Also some parts of uh, arts who, which are uh, uh, imitative and uh, somehow mechanic and sort of stupid but uh, uh, of course he dreamed of a wise art and he thought this this not uh, uh, mimetic not uh, representative rather mathematical going deeply to the soul is poetry and music but still it is far from business yes. <laughs> You want me to respond? Or? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I really believe that, uh, uh, that the, the, uh, the, the proper place to begin philosophy is not by reading philosophy books, but with the arts. Um, because I think in literature, in music, in fine arts, uh, that uh, philosophical questions are raised, that the soul is, is stirred in its search for meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is how I begin, actually, in, in teaching my beginning students. We, we, we don't read philosophy at first. Uh, the soul has to be stirred <laughs> before philosophy becomes meaningful. Uh, and that, uh, I see, is, uh, is, uh, the, uh, is what the arts do, do best. Mm -hmm. so, thank you very much. Okay, we just you. Uh, uh,